Hello everyone, welcome back to Book Club Preview. I'm Michael, and today we're looking at The Maze Runner, Chapter 18. So let's just jump straight into it. The first thing is, you know, after Minho leaves, and Thomas is just like, how could that guy do that? How could he just leave me and agree me? And then he's looking at Albi, and he kind of sees like, you know, I can't remember anything about myself. But I know I am not the kind of person to leave someone else when they're in danger. And, and that was pretty cool. Like he just like, man, I know who I am, like what kind of person I am. And so he decides that I am staying here and I'm going to try and help Albie as much as I can. Well, he starts to think and he's trying to decide, OK, what can I do to protect us or to fight the grievers or do whatever? And he's looking around, he tries to put Albi on his back and carry him, but Albi's way too heavy. They get a few feet and he falls over. Um, he tries to drag him, he's too heavy. So he just puts him back by the door, and he's just not sure what to do. Well, Minho said that they tried to climb up the walls before, but he didn't give him much information. So... Um, Thomas starts looking at the vines and they're really thick and they're really strong and he kind of pulls them and yeah they they will hold so he's pretty impressed and so you know he kind of leans back and picks himself up and the vine is still there and so he starts to grab a whole bunch of these vines you know maybe like six of them and then he grabs Albie's body pulls it over to the vines and he starts to tie the vines to Albie's body. Then he tries to pull Albie up the wall as he is climbing through the cracks. Well, Albie's way too heavy. He can't do it. So he goes back down and this whole time he's hearing <laughs> sounds and seeing lights bounce off the wall. And he knows the grievers are coming. And he's really, really freaked out. But he doesn't give up. Instead, he uses this fear to give him energy. And so then he's at the bottom of the wall. And he pushes Albi's arm up. And then he ties it to another vine. And then he ties his other arm to a vine and his feet. And he's, Albi's hanging three feet above the ground. So then Thomas climbs up. And he does it again. And then he does it again. And does it again and slowly and very slowly I'm sure and I can't imagine how hard this would be but Albie and Thomas start going up the wall finally they get about 30 feet into the air and that's that's actually really high that's probably higher than a house there's 30 feet in the air and Thomas is just dead tired as you can imagine, I, I can't even imagine doing this. His body's just exhausted. He has a rope, a vine tied around him, and he's just like, oh, <sighs> breathing deeply. And as he's breathing, suddenly there's this red light just a few feet from his face, or maybe right next to it, I can't remember. And it's one of the beetle blades. And he's just immediately like, ah! but he doesn't say anything. He just, <gasps> catches his breath and he's looking at it and it's very very dark out and so this red light that the beetle blade has is very bright but Thomas tries to focus and see um, see past the light and then he reads this one word that he thought he saw before wicked and when he reads this Thomas is just filled with dread with fear um, is it the people that put him here are wicked? Is he wicked? There's this word wicked and it just makes him feel um, terrified. Well, he remembers that the little beetles are the eyes of the creators. I think that's what Albie called them. But he didn't tell him anything more than that. And so Thomas tries to hide from the beetle blade. And he doesn't know if maybe they sense movement or body heat, whatever, but he just stops moving stops breathing <gasps> and he waits finally 
the beetle blade turns around and runs off into the maze. And Thomas oh, oh, gulps in some air. But before he can start to relax, he sees a griever come into their path into the maze. And that is where the chapter ends. Why? Why did you have to end here, chapter? Oh, I wanted to read so much more. But we'll have to wait for next week. Vocabulary. Broken down. You can probably guess what this means. It means something that doesn't work anymore. But we can also use this to describe our emotional state. Someone that just starts crying. <laughs> we can say they broke down. Their body, their emotions just kind of came all out and they just kind of broke out. Um, we can also talk about it with like fear, right? Minho broke down. He let his fear take control of him and he ran away. So Thomas did not break down. Interspersed. This is occasionally or in between. And so there's like some silence and then some sound. Silence and some sound. Or this kind of sound and then this kind of sound. So, I mean, this just means um, at different times, separated out. Flump. <laughs> this is just that sound like flump when um, Thomas like falls to the ground because he can't carry Albie. Albie's already just like bleh, and Albie just goes flump, flumps to the ground. Circulation. That is the um, circle, things going in a circle. In our body, it's our blood going throughout our body. And as Thomas is wrapping around these vines, he's afraid he's going to cut off Albie's circulation. So then maybe his hands will turn white. But it's like, well, it's either cut off his circulation or stay down here and die. So he doesn't care about it. He just continues to do it. Elated. Elated is um, like incredibly happy. Um, it's just that feeling of, of joy. Of um, Maybe after you run for a really long time and you just stop and you oh, feel so exhausted, but at the same time, you kind of get this boost and you just feel so happy. Maybe you'll lie down on the grass and you just laugh. A lot of times in movies or cartoons, something like that will happen. The last, um, actually, I'm not sure if this is the last one, but tauntly. Taunt means, um, it means it's tight. So if I have a rope and there's like some bendy parts in the rope, it's loose. But if I hold it so it's tight and firm, that is taunt. If you imagine two people doing a tug of war, they always make sure the rope is taunt, that it is tight before they start pulling. Otherwise, like, it, you know, you just pull that, um, that rope. So um, the vines were, were taunt. They were extended out. Revved. Um, if you imagine like a car engine, when you push on the gas pedal, vroom, vroom, that action revving the engine, filling it full of energy. And so um, they hear this sound of these uh, whoo, whoo, kind of these mechanical sounds coming from the griever of them going to a high pitch of motion because they're moving so fast. Discussion question. And this is a pretty basic one, but I want you to think about it deeply, okay? Would you have stayed with Albi? All right? Oh, yes, of course, I would never leave Alby. All right, come on, think about it, think about it. All right, you're Thomas. You're about ready to die. Alby might already be dead. <laughs> what would you do? Would you try to save this probably dead person? Or would you run off on your own like Minho? I know it's really hard to think about, okay? And you don't want to say run away. Just naturally, we don't want to say that. But really think, what would you have done? Would you have stayed with Albie? Or maybe it's better that one of you lives than both of you die, right? I mean, I don't know what you're thinking about, but what would you have done? 
Of course, please write your own discussion question. There are so many wonderful things we could talk about and ask about in this chapter. That is all the time that we have for today. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Book Club Preview, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye. Hey, if you have any questions about the video today, uh, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. If you had any other vocabulary words that you wanted to know what they meant, uh, let me know. And also, if you're interested in maybe joining one of these book clubs, um, please leave a comment and I'll get back to you. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.